One of the most common mistakes a lot of first-time cruisers make is not understanding what they agree to when they book the cruise. Today, I've got a list of things you probably didn't know you agreed to in your cruise contract up next. Hey everyone, it's Matt from RoyalCarbonblog.com and all too often in life in general, when you run into an unexpected problem, you might be told, did you read the fine print? And that applies to a cruise as well. I love going on cruises, but it's really important to understand what the cruise contract is because I think a lot of people assume way too much about their cruise vacation. One of the major things that I try to preach here on our YouTube channel is to inform everybody who goes on a cruise about what to expect and what you should be doing or not doing on board a cruise. But I think a lot of people are actually surprised by how much they opt into without maybe even knowing it by agreeing to the cruise contract. When you book a cruise, you're agreeing to Royal Caribbean's cruise contract. Every cruise line has a cruise contract, which is the fine print, the terms and conditions that applies to everybody who books a cruise. This is true, by the way, if you go on an airplane, you rent a car at a car rental place, go to a hotel, there's always the fine print that really nobody reads, but it is part of the experience. And since cruising is a little bit different, I wanted to highlight some of the major things that you're going to be agreeing to as part of your cruise contract so you're aware of it. This isn't to say these things are problems or bad. It's just that a lot of people are simply ignorant of this fact. And then if they have a negative experience, something doesn't go their way, they go back and complain and say, I can't believe that I'm not getting a refund or compensation for this, even though they actually agreed to all those conditions without actually taking the time to read it. Ultimately, as a consumer, it is your responsibility to read this, not for the company that you're doing business to, to spoon feed you the information. So here are the big ones you should be aware of, starting off with number one, and that is, I think this is the most important one. I hear about this all the time. Itinerary changes can happen at any time, and the cruise line doesn't owe you anything. Here's the most common scenario. Somebody books a cruise, and they're supposed to visit the Dominican Republic, Mexico, Iceland, who knows where. And for whatever reason, they're not able to go there. Maybe bad weather. Maybe there's a geopolitical issue. Maybe the ship needs to go refuel somewhere else. Who knows what the case may be, but they end up not going to that particular port and the cruise line owes you absolutely nothing. According to the cruise contract, the carrier, which is Royal Caribbean in this case, may for any reason at any time and without prior notice, cancel, advance, postpone, or deviate from any scheduled sailing, port of call, destination, lodging, or any activity on or off the vessel, or substitute another vessel or port of call, destination, lodging, or activity. This oftentimes comes in the form of somebody who books a cruise many months in advance. I always recommend doing that. And then they end up having a itinerary change, or they swap out ships or something else in between, right? It's important to understand that the cruise line doesn't owe you anything, and there's no guarantees you'll get to any particular port. So if you're cruising during hurricane season, and your itinerary goes from Western to Eastern, you're not owed anything. If your cruise ends up going to absolutely no ports at all, every single port you're supposed to go to is unable to get to for whatever reason, weather, political reasons, who knows what, you're still not owed anything. Now, will Royal Caribbean maybe compensate you anyway? Yeah, that has been the case in a lot of scenarios in which itineraries are changed. Royal Caribbean wants to do the right thing by the consumer and offer them some compensation, but you're not owed anything. And the fact that somebody on some other sailing got X amount of onboard credit or a refund or whatever doesn't mean they owe you anything. That was a different scenario, and every scenario is approached from a totally different position than previous ones before that. So the bottom line, the most important thing to understand is your itinerary can change, and the cruise line doesn't owe you anything about it. Again, not to say that they won't, but they're not owed anything. Next thing you should be aware of the cruise contract is you agree to every single rule and regulation after you book. Every rule that you may or may not read on board your cruise applies to you, whether you're aware of it or not, whether somebody told you about it or not, it's in the cruise contract. So if you want to go do the water slides and you realize you're too heavy to go on the water slides, you agreed to that already. If a crew member tells you to do something and you don't do it, you're agreeing to listen to the crew member, what you can or can't bring on board, different protocols, all of that applies to you and you agree to it as part of your cruise contract. Now, something that's kind of different and something we're gonna talk about specifically is also the COVID-19 policies and procedures. This is a really important one because I think even though we're here in 2022 and things have been generally better than they were in 2021 or 2020, you're still agreeing to mandatory compliance of all COVID-19 policies and procedures even after you book your cruise. This is a really common scenario in which you book your cruise and then months later, closer to your sailing, 
Royal Caribbean changes the protocols. Nope, you're not entitled to a refund. You're not entitled to Royal Caribbean informing you directly of this kind of situation. This is what you agree to when you booked your cruise that no matter what the rules are and no matter when they change, you're going to comply with them. Now, if you're not okay with that, obviously you should cancel your cruise. This is true of all the rules, by the way. If any of the cruise contract rules really don't jive with you, well, then obviously cruise is not for you. It's not your position people to go in there and be like i'm a martyr i'm a rebel i'm gonna fight these rules no that's not how that works you're agreeing to them when you book the cruise so it's really important to understand that because the cruise contract that you agree to when you book is part of that and by the way if you're wondering when do you agree to the cruise contract when you actually place the deposit when you book that cruise if you go to the website you're gonna see a checkbox there if you book through the travel agent you're gonna get notification that when you book the cruise as well is that it's part of the understanding when you make the reservation. So that's really important to understand. Something else the cruise contract spells out is what items are prohibited to bring on board a Royal Caribbean cruise. I've talked about this in the past in other videos, but there's a long list of things you're not allowed to bring on board a ship, and that's in your cruise contract. You're not allowed to bring on firearms and ammunition, sharp objects, including all knives and scissors, illegal drugs and substances, CBD oil, candles, incense, coffee makers, clothes, irons, travel steamers, hot plates, hoverboards, martial arts, self-defense, and sports gear, flammable liquids and explosives, hookahs, ham radios, baby monitors, yeah, seriously, electrical extension cords, dangerous chemicals, including bleach and paint, perishable food and meat products, and of course, alcoholic beverages. Now, there are some exceptions to some of these things I mentioned, you know, sports equipment, you can bring on actually baseball bats, hockey sticks, uh, cricket bats, and golf clubs if you're going to use them on shore, not on board the ship. Ditto if you want to bring on, you know, bottles of wine or non-alcoholic beverages on board. And there's a couple of exceptions like uh, personal grooming items, such as safety razors and scissors with blade lengths less than four inches are allowed. But for most of that stuff I just rattled off to you, that's all prohibited. And that's part of your cruise contract that you're not allowed to bring on there. This next part of the cruise contract is something that actually surprises me a little bit. And that's port fees and taxes can still change. So even after you make your reservation, even after you make final payment, you may still owe money for port fees and taxes. Now, full disclosure, this is unlikely to occur to you, but fees can still change after you've paid in full. The port fees you pay at booking are the cruise line's best guess of your individual share of what the ship is going to owe for docking at the ports of call planned for your cruise. But of course, that could change if those estimates change and you might end up owing more. This could apply also to things like fuel supplements, although in full disclosure, Royal Caribbean has never actually charged them, but if the price of fuel dramatically went up to the point that Royal Caribbean had implement a fuel surcharge, even after you made final payment, you may still owe that money on board. Now, again, is it likely to occur for any of these? Probably not. In fact, I'm trying to remember a time in which it did occur to me. More often, it ends up going down than going up, but it's possible to occur, and you should be aware of these possible changes for fees that even after you make final payment, you could theoretically still owe money. This next one is really important because I think now with cruise with confidence being over, it's important to understand that there are penalties for canceling at the last minute. I'm not talking about a week before. I'm talking about canceling even at all, especially if you book non-refundable cruise fare. Royal Caribbean has penalties and fees associated with canceling your cruise, depending on when you do it and the type of fare you booked. If you book non-refundable cruise fare, you're always subject to a $100 per person change fee if you end up canceling or moving your reservation at all. Now, of course, if you cancel your cruise altogether and you're past the final payment date, well, then regardless of which cruise fare deposit you made, you're still going to be subject to certain penalties for canceling your cruise. It could be half the total price, 75% of the total price, or even 100% of the total price if you cancel really at the last minute. You're going to have to check the cruise contract for the exact penalties, but it's really important to understand what those penalties are, when they kick in, and the cruise fare you book. Ultimately, I think this is a really important part of what a travel agent provides to somebody who's especially new to cruising, is that to remind you of what the penalties are and the ramifications of booking non-refundable or refundable cruise fare. And most importantly, when you get the final payment date, should you make final payment, should you cancel, or should you wait? These are all really important things to understand. And ultimately, I run into many people who send angry emails saying, Matt, I couldn't believe that I can't get a full refund. Unfortunately, that's what you agree to as part of the cruise contract. So it's very important to you to be understanding of what the cancellation policy is. So that way there are no surprises later on. And the last really important thing to understand about a cruise contract, although this is not the end all be all of what the cruise contract is about, you should still read it. And that is, it's not the cruise line's fault if you get hurt or even die on board. Now, this is pretty typical for most companies to absolve themselves of responsibility if you were to get hurt on board. That being said, I'm not a lawyer, so I'm not going to go into the, you know, whether or not this actually will hold up or anything like that. But the cruise contract says the carrier shall not be liable for injury, death, 
illness, damage, delay, or other loss to person or property, or any other claim by any passenger caused by acts of God, war, terrorism, civil commotion, labor trouble, government interference, perils of the sea, fire, orders by government agencies restricting travel to declare pandemics, public health emergencies, or outbreaks of communicable disease, COVID-19, influenza, colds, neurovirus, quarantines, national or regional emergencies, among that. Now, that's kind of, I think, not that surprising. Maybe it is. I don't know. But basically, it's not Royal Caribbean's fault if any of those things happen to you or you get injured or hurt by them. In addition, you should really read what the cruise contract says about certain activities. In fact, my favorite one is the Flow Rider, which is something I've, by the way, never actually done because I'm afraid of getting hurt on it. But in the cruise contract, it says, for the Flow Rider, although the fall area is padded, there is a high risk of injury upon falling and being swept by the rushing water into the back of the rear wipeout area and forced against the back wall. So again, this is about risk and understanding what those risks are. That's not to say that going on a cruise ship is unsafe. That's not to say that going on the Flow Rider is unsafe. It's to say that there are risks in life. And if you were to encounter unlikely one of those risks, well, it's not the cruise line's responsibility to basically take care of you or compensate you in any particular way. Again, I'm not a lawyer. I'm not saying whether or not this will actually hold up in court or what your choices are. I'm just simply saying this is what you agree to as part of the cruise contract. And all this is, again, meant to reinforce this idea that this is part of what the cruise contract is. And I think a lot of people are simply unaware they're opting into this and then later on try to complain about, hey, I don't like this, I want a refund, and they're not entitled to one, and then get angry that we're telling them, by the way, this was in the cruise contract, that you agree to. Again, an informed consumer is a smarter consumer, and ultimately, it's to your advantage to be aware of what the policies are so there are no surprises later on. Let me know in the comments which of these policies really surprised you, and if there's anything in the cruise contract that I didn't talk about that you think is really important, let me know in the comments below. And while you're below this video, hit the like button, not necessarily about the protocols, but about liking the content and that I'm sharing this information with you to help save you some sanity later on. Subscribe to our channel and turn on your notifications. That way, YouTube lets you know we have a brand new video to share. This has been Matt from RoyalCarbonBlog.com, and we'll talk again real soon.